Oh, sorry. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with walk-in bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Oh, well, we know that. I get, I get, okay, never mind. You know what? I was just gonna be like, okay, never mind. I was gonna say, yeah, we know that. We just, pro we just proved, well, not proved it, but we just, that's what we just. Thanks, Monokuma. Wow, almost as if it was ironic. So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, mm -hmm. but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Oh, because I thought they were in a girl's room. Because uh, the nameplates. Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. Mm -hmm. The killer could easily make that mistake. Thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. See, this is why everyone should have investigated. We, we were stumbling on little things. One important detail, the nameplates. I just said those. Some, oh, so, uh, okay. We can report to, to, uh, this. I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! Way to assume it was a dude, Hifumi. And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Uh, oh yeah, I think that's the switch nameplate thing we do that's... Which is the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Apparently so. We can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident, but... Uh, that doesn't really matter. The killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Yeah, I, I Regardless, I it was a pointless act. <laughs> Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? Mm-hmm. That is a definite possibility. So in other words, yes. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Which is everyone, aside from us two. Then Makoto couldn't have done it. Thank you, Toko. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Okay, then who did do it? Leon. I'm sorry, but I give up. Quit without saving. No, Fumi, don't. Please don't. You know what? I just realized that um, if Leon... Like, Leon's got to be the killer, right? Hey. Come on. If that is the case, then I'm like 100... Okay, no, that's not the right phrase. I was actually kind of right about that thing at the beginning, where they showed us Saika, Junko, Leon, and Mondo. Mondo, look out, buddy! I think you might be next! But, what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Uh, no, T Taka, that's a terrible idea. Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? No, I don't agree with Leon on this one. Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Get down, does hero. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You gotta sound so disappointed. Yeah, come on, Hina's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Yeah, see, Taka oh, agrees yeah. with me. Okay, so, um, well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? I mean, I was wondering about that. I'm pretty much 100% sure Sayaka let them in. Like, I'm 
pretty sure. Because, I mean, you can't pick the locks. She had my key. There isn't really another way to get in. <laughs> yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? No. I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... Maybe someone picked the lock? It's impossible. Negative. If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Thank you, Taka. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Ms. Maizono just let him in. I think you're right, Hifumi. I think you're 100% right. Oh, that can't be it either. Oh, sorry, Makoto. Oh. Well, I mean, switching the rooms, right? Um, yeah. I got it. Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. I don't know that matters, though. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Yeah, well, what was the no point of switching? I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. No, I still think she did, though. Being scared was a lie. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? Oh, um... There's only one to talk to you about. Just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil, and these are the words that appear. Oh, man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. I mean, I haven't, because I don't watch detective shows, really. But I do know that's a thing you can do. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap. I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. Uh, okay, okay, thanks, Hina. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. That is a true statement. Oh, and I should also mention... I found the notepad on the desk yeah. in Makoto's room. Great. And it was signed, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure I just saw that, that it was signed by Sayaka. Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Also true. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? N no, I didn't. But... Of course you didn't, because the note yeah. also bears a perfectly legible signature, Sayaka's signature. And that note, Sayaka wrote it? Yeah. But, but why? Why would she write that? Well... The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. Our killer, I'm betting. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. Uh, you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation. What young man could resist? Many, I'm sure. I'm sure Taka could. Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Sure. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? I mean, actually, Hifumi, you're all, all, all of you, all 15. Well, actually, no, all 13. Well, all 15, really, yeah. All 15 of you are completely flat. Like, I've, I've seen you guys when walking around. You're all completely flat. And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. <sighs> Why do you say that? Celeste. Mm! I mean, no, I, I can't do that here, because it's, it's Leon. What makes you say that? It's Leon. It's gotta be. 
Would you like to hear what I have to say? Uh, no. Very well then. But pay attention. Okay, make sure I remember how I'm doing this. I say as if I've not done this in years. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Indeed we did. But in the know, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. Indeed it does. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So we know mm -hmm. that words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. Mm, it certainly would seem that way. Guys, we just didn't discuss this. I thought of this. But this see, this is why you will need to get in on the investigation. The reason the kill went to my room and not psych is despite what the note said. It must be because Yes, we did. I don't I think I've decided that I'm just gonna go through all of these, like every single statement, just to you know, get everything. You know. Okay. Yeah. No, that's wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to enjoy saying that. I, I can just the tell. The on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. Indeed, they did. They got switched? Which you would have known if you'd got involved in the investigation. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. Which ultimately means the whole thing is pointless. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. Which, I mean, you all should have figured out. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Correct. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Also, indeed, true. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right. Okay, then who did it? There's only one person who could have switched the nameplates. I got it! The only other person who knew we switched rooms. Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. Which I think the little, the little nagging uh, thing in my mind, I'm pretty sure is going to turn out to be true then. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. Yeah, she does specific. It is pretty specific. Like, you wouldn't really specify, hey, make sure you get the nameplate right, would you? Because it's like, you'd naturally do that anyway. It's kind of weird to point that out. So I want to talk to you about just, in two, just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplate to make sure you don't get the, ro the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells yeah. the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Uh, I mean... Yeah. But why would she switch them in the first place? Well, I suppose it's not the only reason, but I, it is pretty weird that she specifies it. She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Yeah. Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. Yeah, Taka. Yeah, you're a bit late to that party. We faulty. still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, Perhaps. I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Uh, yes, definitely. 
Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Got it for self-defense, my man. Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. Mm -hmm. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Gold dust. Or gold leaf. Um There we go. I got it! Got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken <laughs> wrist. And it should become pretty clear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Man, that moment when you realize your nails are longer than Sayaka's. Is, is that gold? Gold dust, gold it leaf, sure yeah. Is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. <laughs> Where she got hit. I got it! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist. Right you are, Taka. See, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. Alright, then it's about time to solve this mystery. Well, I don't think solving it just from there is quite that easy. It happened in my room. And what led to Saika's death? That's what we need to make clear. Oh, there's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. Are you going to use these non-stop debates? Starting with the next debate, you'll be loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. Okay. Just like the weak spots, only one of these bullets can actually refute the proper statement. Makes sense. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gauge. Press the L button to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullets to fire. And press and release the L button to cycle through each bullet. Okay. Or you can hold the L down and use the left stick to select a specific bullet. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. It doesn't matter, I went for the whole... Yeah, I went for double mean. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. Sword sheath, I'm guessing. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack. And that's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 um... The sword was used first and then the knife came afterward. Yes. Is that really the or... Wait, hold on. No, it's not, is it? Yeah, no, 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 it's not, because there's... I'm j I I'm not crazy, am I? There's... <sighs> yes, it was scratched with a sharp object. So it's a hero statement, right? I think. Boom! If it did, it wouldn't have the scratches on the sheath. Probably. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Mm. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you take it out of the sheath first, right? Indeed you That's would. That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Well, I mean, I've never used a sword myself, so I wouldn't know, but... Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword. 
forward as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife. Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. I don't think so, so she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. You're close, Taka, but there's just yeah, the beginning. But I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. Yeah, me either. She'd have the gold stuff on her hands, wouldn't she? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. Yeah. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. The only thing on her hands is the blood on her left index finger. Uh, her palms. My God! You're talking about her palms, right? Indeed, we are, Makoto. The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Because we just, of what we just discussed, Tina, about how easily the gold flakes off. Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. Mm -hmm. Which, on first glance, I actually thought it was meant to be like that. But then I looked, you know, had a bit of a closer look and realized that it wasn't. Oops. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Yeah, because, I mean, she wasn't exactly going to wash her hands, was she? Oh, she couldn't, because the water's turned off. So... I mean, yeah, no, yeah, 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 so it was like, well, unless it happened before night time, but no, it did, because the night bell happened when I was walking between the rooms. Is that what it happened? Maybe she washed her hands after she hit No, no. Coco, no. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No! That has nothing to do with Toko! Shut up. I like you, but shut up. No, that's not it at all. Uh, the water was off. She's afraid of water. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Well, you don't... Is it, a... is it in the regulations, or is it on, like, a sign or whatever? No, I don't think it was on a sign. It's, it's in the regulations, right? How would you not know that? Also, why haven't you had a shower yet, Togo? Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Huh? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. <laughs> insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. Indeed it does. But hold on. That's right. Then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... Sayaka. I got it! We got Sayaka? it. She had the kitchen knife? Yeah. But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first. And the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Then the one who attacked first was... Sayaka. Sayaka? Yeah. Do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. Is this why you told me... You know, you told Makoto that he had to figure this out? <laughs> no, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. Yeah. Great. What? She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited Money? the culprit to the room she was staying in. 
And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? No, was she? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. Uh. It's a possibility. Yeah, it is. I hadn't really thought about that, actually. Sayaka wanted to... on me? And it's like, at that point, we didn't... We didn't actually know at that point, did we? We didn't know that all this would happen. Because we found out about that after Sayaka was dead. Hence the whole Junko thing. Uh, rip in pieces, Junko. Yeah, she'd switch them right back afterwards. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying, and by committing the murder there instead of her room, that could implicate Makoto. But for that to work, Makoto. the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that plan seem a little risky? Uh, yeah. For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switch rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bit of a puss. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing. Which is why, out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. I mean, also because we're close, right? Like, Makoto wouldn't say no, would he? He'd, he'd never say no. Oh, sorry, I just adjusting myself a little bit. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. Mm. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. I didn't th I thought you'd go in a different direction with that, but you have a point. You have a point. Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She Indeed launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Yeah, that's uh, some karma right there. That can't be true. Sorry, Makoto. Makoto. But it's true. Because, because why, dude? Hey, hey, you guys have Makoto. Totally the <laughs> I don't know why I like saying that. Makoto. It's like, I'm not a teddy bear. I just like saying it. And, um, <laughs> it's like Junko's entire voice. Right now. Hey. On. Just because my commentary isn't top tier quality. A little bit ill, man. Okay. Yes, hero. But you were the one. You were one of the people who not like five minutes. Well, not like half an hour ago. Was like, oh hey, don't do that. And Taco was. Whatever. What one? We can't uncover who murdered Sayaka. It's over for all of us. Is, is it really all over? Obviously I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing... Yes, there is! Dying message. Yeah, there are. Very well. Then let's review all the clues we found up to this point one more time. Do we really have time for all that? Die! Die! If we don't do something, we're all gonna die! Wait, no. Hold on. That's right. There is still a clue left that can lead us to who killed her. Sayaka left it behind. Thank you, Makoto. Say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? 
Boom. Can we please figure out that it says Leon and not just have like a... Oh, well, what do the numbers mean? Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, what did you say? What? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that... I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? Really no. But I'm guessing cause first case, yes. Left index finger. I yeah. <laughs> Her left index finger had blood on it. I mean that could very easily be forged. But that could only you know. be because she used that finger to write the message. To that extent, I don't think they would have tried to like Hide the message. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone else wrote it, I don't. Like, I don't think they try to use Psyker's body because you know Psyker's body's like covering it a little bit. I don't think they would have written it like that. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree Psyker wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro, you're a computer no. or whatever, right? You should know yes, all about but... numbers and shit. No, no, come on. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Thank you, Kyoko. Oh, yeah, it looks like... What? What? Oh, wow, no, Hifumi, really? Just, uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Wow, Hifumi figured it out. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Okay, you just figured out the end uh, you're bit. right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa! You might have finally just said something worth a shit. Excuse you! <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But yeah. even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. <laughs> Damn it! Come on! Rotate the image 180 degrees. Thank you. Huh? Rotate it. I, I think maybe, maybe I see something. Oh my god! <laughs> now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. I mean, yeah, but it's obvious. So, whose name did she write? Get out of here, you piece of shit. Yeah, the rest of this was like almost the rest of this was pointless. Really. If you turn the message around, because ultimately this is all we need to figure out who did it. It becomes the letters L E O N. Indeed it does. Yeah, dude, they, based on your facial expression, and I bet they are. It's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. Yeah, that's really... Her, thing, her fingers? Her fingers are that thick, are they? In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down, as it were. Which I actually tried. Right here. I mean, they don't have to be, but, um, 
I mean, it makes more sense, like, in your head, if you, uh, <coughs> oh, write it that way. So, I mean, yeah, obviously you're not thinking about how to write letters backwards when you're dying, so, yeah, I'll, I'll give Sayaka, I'll let Sayaka pass on that. I thought they would. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. Yeah, we can, because you did it. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? Hmm? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Um, the shirt. Well, uh... This. This is the only thing that we've gotten rid of. I imagine so, yes. Of the shirt covered in the victim's blood. They threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. Uh-huh. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? Ooh. But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Well, can we really prove something based on the absence of some hair? Yeah. You can. Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That's true. That's right. There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. But you combine the two pieces. Just that one little charred piece. There's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. What riddle? Yeah. Oh, how they, um, which calls it, something they need to pay attention to figure, um, where, because, like, when and how doesn't matter. Oh, wait, no. Talking about, yeah, okay. Oops. Yeah, no, I was thinking it's how. Yeah, no, okay, I was thinking just slightly different. Yeah, okay, now, now that I've rethought it, yeah, now nah, that makes much more sense. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're going to say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. I feel like a bit of an idiot for getting that wrong, but... Uh... You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no, that's wrong! There's one other way to use the incinerator without being the one on trash on cleaning duty. And that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. Uh, is it what I think it is? The only piece of evidence we haven't used yet? Yeah, crystal ball. That's when you need to shoot, no you don't. The only possible suspect is whoever had the trash room key. Okay, so the person who would have had the trash room key was... You. Huh? Me? No! I don't know, I don't think this guy's really capable of killing someone. And I don't mean in like a moral sense, I mean they see him coming and just run. You know? <laughs> No, I'm sure there's another way. Me too. The trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close Good. to the incinerator in order to destroy Boom! No, it's wrong. Counter! Ooh. But if you can't get past the gate, 
You couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... Yeah, dude, I bought it for, like, million dollars, quadrillion, bruh. Oh, man, I'm so dead. Oh, dude, I am so screwed when I get out of here, man. Oh, if I get out of here, man, I'm going to have, like, some serious money problems, dude. It's not good. But how would you use it? Oh, well, you know, I just, like, put it in front of me, man, and then I, like project some stuff inside it, and I'm like, ha, ah, that's what you're gonna do in the future. Then my client just, uh, doesn't get my clairvoyancy powers. Uh, dude. <laughs> uh, and then I make them pay me obscene amounts of cash, and there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I think that was me trying to be funny. Kira had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was divine with it. Yeah, man. I mean, what else are you gonna do with a crystal ball, huh? The incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. There is one, like, okay. Obviously, it's you know they, this could have happened, but like the get the holes in the side, like the size, the holes in the gate don't seem to match up the size of the crystal ball for me, at least in my head, which makes this kind of a weird conclusion to come to, but. It, or, you know, when I, you know, I, I first considered it, like a couple, not a couple of minutes ago, but like, you know, you just look at this and it's like, oh yeah, that must be how they did it. But, um, yeah, it seemed a little, about no one getting in. Uh, someone turned the incinerator on. Very Strange. I'm quite certain it was off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Kifumi <sighs> had the key, so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Whoa! Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, yep. come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. Indeed. Actually, that's a good point. They would have picked up the shirt. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on clean... Oh, I forgot that the incinerator was still on. Taken care of much more thoroughly. Oh, yeah, of course it was. No, oh, wait, stupid. No, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least... 30 feet, right? So I guess they are going to incorporate like talents into the murders. That's cool. Uh, well. Wouldn't have been a challenge for the killer because he's the ultimate baseball star. Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? Not really. Yeah, dude. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong. I'm telling you. Oh, excuse you. You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. Do what, though? 